When creating games for multiple platforms, each platform has unique input devices, keyboards, controllers, touchscreens, etc. Unity's input system provides a powerful solution to address this complexity, enabling seamless handling of diverse input types with a single unified workflow. This is the first in a series of videos that will look in detail at Unity's input system. Over the course of the video series, we will cover setting up input actions, input system scripting for character control, adding input system mobile controls, using the UI toolkit alongside the input system for menus and inventories, in-game input rebinding so players can choose their own input controls, and finally local multiplayer games using the player input and player input manager components. If you want to understand the difference between the input system and the older input manager, check out the following video. The link can be found in the video description below. This video will cover working with the input actions editor and different ways to add input actions. I have created a new blank project in Unity 6. Go to window and open the package manager. Ensure that input system is installed from the Unity registry and using at least version 1.9 or above. In this series I am using version 1.11. If you do not see the input system actions asset or you accidentally delete it, go to edit and project settings in the input system package section. Input system package version 1.8.2 and above allows you to create and assign a default project wide action asset with predefined input actions. Double click to open the input action editor. This features a set of common input controls that you can use in any game. You can also continue to add your own to this. On the left are the action maps. These are categories of input controls designed for different uses within the game. Player for controlling the player and UI for interacting and moving around a user interface such as a menu or inventory. You can create as many action maps as you like and switch between them, enabling or disabling all the actions within each map. You can create multiple action maps, for example for driving a vehicle, specific controls for mini games such as picking a lock or different controls for player 2 etc. Each action map has a collection of input actions. Here move collects the bindings to the gamepad left stick, WASD and arrow keys on the keyboard, XR controller and joystick controller. Unlike the input manager, all of these different devices can be controlled in code with a single name of move. The left stick has derived bindings for common gamepad controllers such as Xbox, PlayStation, Switch, WebGL gamepad and other generic gamepads, Android and iOS mobile left stick controls. The look action is controlled with a gamepad right stick and a pointer that uses the delta or change in position. This includes mouse, pen or touchscreen. The attack action is controlled with the gamepad button west. These buttons can be named differently on different gamepads, so it uses the button location instead, ensuring all gamepad controllers can press the West button to perform an action regardless of the actual button name. It also binds to the left mouse button. First touch on the touchscreen, enter on the keyboard and trigger on the joystick. You can add new actions by clicking the plus icon. The name you will give it will be the one you reference in code and will monitor all the controls it is bound to. For each input there are three action types. The default is value. Use this for any inputs which should track continuous changes to the state of a control. For example a left stick right stick of a gamepad that could be changing every frame, a mouse position which could be moving every frame etc. Button is used for button actions where it can register a button press, a button held or a button release. Pass through is similar to value, however it performs less processing on the input. Value will pass the data on the most activated binding, but pass through will pass all data from all active bindings. This can be useful in some circumstances. Clicking the binding allows you to then choose the path. You can select an item from the list or you can press the listen button. When you press a key on the keyboard or gamepad etc it will find the input for you from the list. For the value action type there are a range of control types to choose from. They can be used in multiple ways but here is a quick example of how you might use some of them. 
Axis can be used when you only want a single axis, for example, only the horizontal x-axis of a gamepad stick. This can be useful for 2D games. Integer can be used to count the mouse clicks or the touch presses on a touch screen. Vector 2 can be used to store 2D axes, for example the X and Y of a gamepad stick, a mouse position or mouse delta as it moves across the screen, or a finger drag across the touch screen. Delta can be used for mouse movement or scroll and reports a change in position, and measures movement in pixels. Vector 3 and Quaternion can be used to store movement and rotation of a gyroscope on mobile, position and rotation of an XR controller in 3D space, etc. You can add extra bindings by clicking the plus icon. For a single input, choose Add Binding. For a composite, for example pressing the WASD or arrow keys, choose Composite, Up, Down, Left, Right. This adds four inputs that work together to return the vector 2 of the X and Y axes. When using the button action type, this will appear as positive negative bindings and allows you to use two buttons together, one returning the positive, the other the negative. This can be useful in a driving game where one button accelerates and the other brakes. For binding with one modifier, it will give you two inputs. To perform the action, you must press both buttons. For example, aiming while shooting requires you to hold one button and press another. For binding with two modifiers, it will give you three inputs. It requires you to press all three buttons to perform the action. You can also add interactions and processes, either to individual bindings or on the main action, in this case, sprint, to apply to all bindings associated with it. The interactions define how you interact with the button or axis. Hold defines how long the button must be held before it triggers the action. Multitap is used to define a set number of taps and the time between each tap before it will trigger the action. Press can be used when you want an action to happen only on press, only on release, or to happen on both press and release. Slow tap defines a minimum tap duration so you have to press the button a bit longer before it triggers an action. Tap defines how quickly you must tap the button to perform an action. The processes deal with how data is processed and may vary depending on which action type you have chosen. Clamp allows you to clamp return values, here for example to 0.5 and minus 0.5, so values cannot go above or below those numbers. Invert will invert the values, so instead of a press going from 0 to 1, it will now go from 0 to minus 1. Normalize allows you to jump directly between 0 and the max or min amount that you can define. Scale is used when you want to multiply values by a scale factor to return values above 1. Multiple processors can be stacked up and will be performed in the order they appear in the list. For value based inputs you see some different options. Delta time scale ensures the values are updated from this input using time.delta time and are not frame rate dependent. This only applies to value based inputs. Invert vector 2 allows you to invert the x and y axes independently, useful for flying games. Stick Dead Zone allows you to override the dead zone amount to reduce or increase the sensitivity of a gamepad stick. And that brings us to the end of this first video. We have looked at the main elements in the Input Actions Editor. In the next video we will look at how to write code to control a third person character using an input system asset, getting him moving around a scene using either gamepad or keyboard and mouse. To find out more, click on the link in the video description below. Thanks for watching.